Alors, je voudrais vous présenter. I would like to introduce. Ré applaudissiez. The people here, so you can give them another round of applause. Priscilla Bertin, producer. Andrea Bescon, Andrea Bescon la maman the mother of the diamond. Idir Azougli, le Idir prince charmant Azougli, du diamant. The uh, prince charming of the diamond. Malou Kebizi, Malou le Kebizi diamant. the diamond. Et enfin, And Aga, finally, Aga Riedanger, Aga the uh, director of uh, Rough Diamond, Diamant Brut. Alors, je vais commencer les questions, mais bien I'll sûr, uh, get the ball rolling, and then, uh, of course, it will be over to you. Alors déjà, bon, on va commencer quand même we'll start avec, uh, with the director, ça, the creator uh, of the film. Déjà, de fa de manière générale, In general, la jeunesse du projet, How did this project come about? Why did you take an interest in these seven women, these seven different world, ways of looking at the world? Why did you want to tell the story of Lion? I've always watched Tali Reality. I was flabbergasted by this new mythology this new way of telling a story on TV, on the social media, the social networks. Uh, of course, there's a great uh, uh, amount of uh, class violence. Uh, I was flabbergasted by the violence, which was displayed so openly to all. People think, OK, it's uh, not uh, dangerous. It's just a form of entertainment. But it's not true. This reality TV is uh, very harsh. And I wanted to talk about the violence you see in reality TV. Similarly, I was fascinated by all the candidates who are quite powerful, who are really true to themselves and who have something to say for themselves. I really wondered, therefore, about how they were as women, because they display women in a different way. So I had all these questions in mind, and I wondered, is this proof that uh, they still live in a male-dominated society who, uh, uh, which feels that women are only women if they're really sexy and desirable, or on the contrary, have they espoused all these codes but with the idea of uh, freeing them of the shack themselves of the shackles? They have this uh, weapon, their beauty, which enables them to impose themselves themselves on the world. So there was, it was a mixed bag of all sorts of different questions that uh, I wanted to explore through this film, Rough Diamond. Ever since I studied uh, fine arts, I was interested in the idea of beauty, the representation of beauty, the power that's linked to beauty. This is something uh, that uh, interested me well before I did uh, Rough Diamond. You're also a photographer. You worked on the idea of what we call the cocotte in the 19th century. It's a way of displaying uh, feminineness and uh, desire. I got this idea seven years ago when I made a, a short film, J'attends Jupiter. The idea was then to make a feature film, but it was quite a challenge to decide on how to approach this idea. This, uh, people who watch uh, reality TV are captivated by this reality TV, which displays women in a given way. I didn't know how to go about telling the uh, story. I needed a good heroine. I wanted to show the very praiseworthy reasons why she wanted to go into reality TV. It's an alternative to unemployment. And for my characters, it's a way of imposing themselves on the world, uh, having a place in society, having a job a real profession. 
voilà, c'est une profession. They view it as a real profession. Cette fameuse épiphanie, je l'ai eue effectivement le jour où j'ai vu un documentaire sur ces courtisanes de la courtisane. Well, I watched a documentary about courtesans, prostitutes at the end of the 19th century, and it's quite impressive because you have the same phenomenon, in fact. It's a way for women from the lower ranks of society to impose themselves, to go up the social ladder, to rid themselves of the social stigma, thanks to their beauty, their determination, and their intelligence. In terms of the way they use their beauty, they bring to their feet, to their knees before them, the most powerful men in Europe. And hence, uh, this is an extraordinary way of uh, redefining the codes of society, redefining what uh, women are and how they're viewed in society together with fashion. There's quite a parallel. They uh, depict a new way of being a woman, just like uh, the candidates in reality TV who have a different way of displaying the fact that they're very feminine and they're women. These parallels are very strong. And uh, it's quite striking to note the parallels. Congratulations on your film. I come from Argentina. I knew about your film before I came here, and I saw you introduce some changes in the script, which I think were really good changes. For example, when Lian and her mother well, the scenes at the end of the film are not the same as in the original script. It doesn't finish in exactly the same way, this film. And I don't know whether you did this intentionally. What? Why these changes? Why change the script? And how did you go about the casting? And how did you find this excellent actress, who I think is just beginning in the profession? Yes, indeed, in the script, the end wasn't exactly the same. Lian had to contend with her mother before leaving, and just uh, before that she had to deal with the dino as well. We made this choice with the editor and the producer. We decided to tighten things up, to tighten up the end, so we would focus only on the person who counts most for Lian, that is her sister. And I also thought it was good to portray the fact that she leaves without uh, looking back, without taking the others into account at all. In other words, uh, she had turned the page uh, on what her mother thought. Perhaps uh, she was a bit cruel vis-à-vis -vis Dino, but I felt that uh, this ending was more striking. She needed to leave him. She knew she would destroy him when she said the evening before. She says, I'm sorry because I'm going to really hurt you. And I wanted uh, to narrow things down to the bare bones of this uh, aspect of the story. How did we find Malou? It was very important for me to ensure that the cast would be good, that uh, Lian would be a non-professional actress, simply to be consistent. Lian is invisible, she wants to become uh, famous, so I really wanted to have an actress who wasn't well known. There was a question of a geographical and political consistency as well. I needed to choose actresses who came from the south. Julia Lyon did the casting and she spent months and months trying to find a Malou and uh, her little sister and her friends who needed to uh, have grown up in the South. Bonjour, Margot Costa. Pour Margot Cinéma. Costa, congratulations on the film. You depict uh, a group of people we're not accustomed to seeing and who aren't very present in the world of the cinema in general. In the script and in the performances of the actresses, you didn't... Uh, fall into what I would call clichés, things were not sort of set pieces. 
Yes, that was one of the big challenges in the film. We needed uh, to live up to the characters and not say too much and not underscore too many things, overly uh, insist on certain points. The characters are very different, so that was also very important. We wanted to ensure that the public felt very close to the characters. We all realized we were dealing with a topic, uh, mainly hypersexualization, extreme uh, uh, feminineness, uh, being overly sexy. We had to be very careful. And at all points in the film, in terms of the costumes, the lighting, the positioning of the characters in space, how they moved about, how they behaved, all that was extremely important. And of course, uh, we pursued this task in the editing. We didn't want to uh, portray things like a, a caricature when the uh, traits become too uh, pronounced. We didn't want to dwell on things too much, uh, overly insist on them. We didn't want to position the bodies in a too obvious way, as though to say, well, here, we're really trying to show you this or show you that, because then it would become uh, trite. So this in entailed a lot of very detailed work. It was a tremendous challenge when making the film. I'd like to take the floor again. We're talking about details, precision. And I'd like Malou to answer me on this point. The directing. I have the impression that each gesture is very important, each posture each position of the body, even how you uh, uh, glue the shiny stars on, on your shoes or on your fingernails. It uh, looks as though you really had to work hard at all this. Yes, uh, I had to work hard on other aspects uh, pertaining to the body. When we met, uh, we talked about this. What was important for Agathe was to do away with little mannerisms that we acquire uh, as uh, young girls when growing up, i.e. Uh, smiling too much when someone talks to you, uh, nodding constantly uh, in agreement. These are things we unknowingly uh, do all the time because we were educated in that manner. And uh, Liane is uh, different. She's not trying to seduce people. That's very interesting, but it's quite paradoxical. The focus was not seduction, but what she wants to do is to be loved by everyone. So it's uh, difficult to uh, combine these two rather uh, opposite uh, aims. Well, indeed, we had lengthy discussions when we met. It wasn't all that complicated, in fact, in the end. It was fairly easy to understand. Lian applies social codes, the codes she sees that she espouses, but uh, her mother, for example, is not uh, nearly as feminine as she is. She's very, very different indeed from her daughter. Of course, the gestures had to be very precise, but it was wonderful having a directress who supported me so much and who was able to give me such detailed answers. I got often said to Malou that she had to just forge ahead. And also, she had to play around with her eyebrows. The character applies codes, but doesn't actually follow them. In fact, she refuses to embody these codes. She has conjured up an image of herself, but behind the image, uh, there's really nothing. It's not that she wants to seduce people so much. She wants to please people and be feminine. Seduction, for me, is a given language. She, she doesn't use that kind of language. She says, well, look, this is who I am. You uh, accept me the way I am or, or not, as you like. We worked a lot on the way she walks, the way she uh, uh, looks uh, at the ground all the time, doesn't uh, look up that much. She never uh, uh, puts her head to one side. Uh, 
There is a lot of body language there that uh, Malou uh, grasped uh, in a fraction of a second. It was incredible. It's interesting what you say. She's very physical, but at the same time uh, not physical at all. But that's bound up with the idea of being a virgin. Your film deals with the idea of sex and, and virginity. You have the three uh, legendary female figures, the, the mother, the mother who's a whore. These are images, indeed. The candidates uh, who want to be in reality, want to be in reality TV have to embody all these kinds of things. They have to be very physical, everything has to be really sexy. Lian has conjured up this image. She lives through the way men look at her and through the social networks. Yet, uh, as the film uh, unfolds, she becomes more aware of uh, the failings of all this. And at the end, she becomes far more lucid. She's a much stronger person. Things may be a bit radical, but uh, she is looking for pureness at the same time. She's looking for something very absolute. And she keeps saying, well, I feel different. Yet at the same time, she is exposed to a lot of social pressure linked to her gender, her sex, and uh, uh, the idea that you have to uh, uh, fuck. You have to make love. I'm sorry, I was a bit vulgar, says the uh, director. Well, you're allowed to be so. It's your first film. This idea was very important, and it underpins the, the film. She is a virgin, and uh, as such, uh, it makes her very vulnerable. It also shows that she hasn't learned to love herself, to love her body. She was surrounded by so much violence that uh, she didn't feel she could trust anyone. She's grown up in an atmosphere of violence. Okay, there's a young man who gives her confidence, but let's go on to the questions. I'd like to know why you decide to depict reality TV in this way. Well, that was my uh, idea from the very outset. I thought it would be an interesting idea to view uh, reality TV through the eyes of Lian. Reality TV was a very powerful thing, and the, thanks to the way we shot the film, you can grow very close to Lian. You have this sort of invisible force, this invisible strength that surrounds the character, and we depicted that uh, through the sound more than anything else. Otherwise, it might have looked rather trite, rather trivial. It's true that the female character is at the center of the film, but I believe that you have a male character who's quite magnificent. There's this uh, purity, there's something uh, of a knight about him, a knight in shining armor. He appears very pure. How did you write this character? And then I turn to the actor. How did you uh, view this character who's very romantic? It's very beautiful. It was very important for me to show that women have to obey certain orders, so to speak, but men as well. And uh, men are supposed to be powerful, virile, uh, strong, impressive. You have all these rules in society which are dictated by a male-dominated society. It was important for me to show this and to show that, on the contrary, the character wasn't like that. He has a very kind, gentle heart. 
he's very aware of the environment and he suffers from these uh, rules imposed by society. It's a film that uh, uh, picks apart all these rules that pervade society. And Zedino is very poetic and appears quite fragile at times. How did you manage to uh, portray all this? Well, for me, the character follows the pace of life. And when he meets Lian, he wants to lose control, so to speak, and show that he can be very gentle. I was beautifully directed by Agathe, uh, and that's why I think that my character turns out so well. I heard on the croisette a sentence, do you want to show your breasts, really? He's very pure. And he doesn't have the same codes. He also is fairly violent. He has other codes. He's quite brutal, in a sense, while being naive at the same time. He's a mixture of compassion, a gentle heart, and uh, uh, the codes dictated by society. He uh, uh, makes uh, uh, a real declaration of love. Yes, indeed. It's not a trivial sentence in the end. And well done. It comes out very well. Also, I'd like to refer to the relationship with the mother. There's a lot of disdain. People look down on reality TV a great deal. You have the, the social background of the family. There are lots of misunderstandings between mother and daughter. How did you write the character of Andrea, who's not a, a very kind person? Well, you have this link uh, to violence, which interests me a great deal. When uh, Agat suggested that I play the character of Sabine, well, Sabine is far from stupid, and she's not nasty as, at all. She's not cruel in any way. She just didn't manage to lead the life she would have liked. Lian criticizes her mother, and she knew that as a character I would have to intervene. There's a lot of uh, uh, psychological weight uh, imposed by the mother on Lian. I was keenly interested in the character. I had to lose weight. I had to look like someone who was tired, worn out by life. By life. Uh, she missed uh, wrecked uh, her life. She she didn't uh, manage to uh, lead the life she would have wanted. When I I, I got the. I started to talk about my hair. I uh, dyed my hair this horrible supermarket uh, color. But that helped me to really uh, espouse the character. Agathe knew exactly where she was going with this character, what she was driving at. I had to work on the face, her face which was sagging, uh, depicting someone who's really um, dissatisfied with her life and who may be jealous of her daughter, who despite uh, the fact that well, she, she looks down on reality TV, uh, it's a kind of uh, uh, dictatorship, uh, she, she, she looks down on all these aspects uh, of reality TV while being jealous at the same time because she would have liked to have the courage and the opportunity to succeed better in her life. Sabine didn't have much willpower, and I felt that it was a very riveting character. I knew I got uh, uh, would uh, find the way, right way to, to shoot the character, uh, likewise with uh, Malou, and everything was extremely striking in the end. The physical transformation was very important in order to uh, serve the character of Sabine and really show what she was like.
Merci pour euh, ce film. Thank you for this euh, film. Jeanne de Félix de chez Pellicult. Jeanne de Félix. Euh, moi, je me questionnais sur la fin du film. I wondered about en fait, the end of the euh, film. We have the impression that she won't be able to uh, really indulge herself with the reality TV, and then you finally see her boarding the plane, so she'd acquired this newfound freedom. But uh, reality TV is, in fact, a, a different kind of a prison. Why did you choose this ending? It was very important for me, for Liane, to succeed. Had she failed, it would have meant that she should never have believed in herself. She shouldn't have challenged the people who didn't believe in her. It was essential, therefore, to celebrate her determination, her uh, belief in herself. That was very important uh, as a character. Also, I wanted to show that she's very lucid. She's aware of what she's leaving behind, and she knows what lies ahead. She has two paths that she can take. Fortunately, you can do something good with reality TV. There are lots of reality TV uh, car candidates who are very happy in their lives and who have a very healthy uh, image of themselves. She needed to uh, do her own thing. It was a bit vertiginous. You have the sun caressing her face, uh, but she's very clear-sighted. She's very lucid. She's quite intelligent. She knows what awaits her, and she chooses which path she wants to take. It was very important to show that reality TV is one possible solution. For the candidates, it is a solution. It's an opportunity. It's a, it's a job. It's a way of earning one's life, different way, granted. But for the candidates, uh, uh, there are lots of people who want to uh, turn reality TV into their career. Oui, bonjour, Teresa Corsero, Kulturzeit, TV Allemande. German TV. Thank you for this very powerful, precise film. I really like the places that you chose to shoot the film. For example, when the two are walking, there are piles of tires, and I find that very beautiful and very symbolical. Would you like to talk about how you found all these locations? That was a real challenge. I wanted Liane to live in Fréjus uh, for uh, political reasons, uh, because uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, very poor people who live in Fréjus as compared with Saint Raphael, where there are more wealthy people. In Fréjus, uh, also, we had lots of landscapes that you don't see much in films. There are landscapes in uh, different villages. Uh, some are very rich, uh, others are completely dry uh, and poor. So there was this huge diversity of landscapes. So I felt uh, that it was great. I had uh, people who found these wonderful locations which uh, fit in beautifully with the screenplay. It was great. <laughs> It was beautiful. And the light's very special. These landscapes uh, are quite distinctive. They have a very strong identity. And uh, the tires in the motorbike club, uh, the idea was to have a very powerful image in the film. It was important uh, for all the characters. Uh, the idea was to paint the tires uh, in order to make them much more graphic and give them greater texture. For each uh, set, there was something very graphic. Each location was chosen because graphically and cinematographically, they, they were really uh, appropriate. 
and right at the beginning as well. First of all, we found Lian's house. That was the biggest challenge. We needed to find the right kind of a house uh, so that we could position the cameras right and this, that, and the other. We needed to find the right sets, the right houses. And as for the pole, it was just in front of the, uh, the house. It was perfect. And one year later, now it's the, the first uh, uh, anniversary uh, uh, of the end of the shooting of the film. We finished exactly one year ago. And at Christmas, I passed by the house, and it's become a hypermarket. There's a, a pole, but there are uh, uh, all sorts of other things, uh, push carts and what have you. It, but it's, it's uh, Liane's pole. Uh, it should have remained that way. We shot the film just at the right time. I think we were very fortunate. We were very lucky because there were a whole pile of coincidences which um, they were sort of a cosmic gift and, and the sets, the decors were, were part of that. It was wonderful. Good morning, everybody. Congratulations on, uh, once more on this very beautiful film. I wanted to react uh, to what was said about the choice of a young actress who's not yet professional and who has uh, uh, wonderful ethics. When you went up the red carpet, I'm sure you realized you were fulfilling your dream and the dream of your character. I'd like to know what emotions you felt at that time. That's a very interesting parallel. In the film, there is a statement about the Cannes Film Festival, and uh, that really made me laugh. I had many more complexes than Liane. And I believe that uh, Lian's dream was to be loved and achieve fame. I was very moved to go up the red carpet, just as she would have been. It uh, showed uh, uh, how we had succeeded. We were all holding hands together with Agathe and Andrea. Lian's uh, best friends are sitting in the front row, and they deserve a round of applause, too. And the young sister. So, to conclude, it was a, a very powerful moment. It's a, a great privilege for me to be here in Cannes and to begin my career in this amazing way. I'll work very hard, and I'm extremely pleased to be here. I'd like to talk about the aesthetics in the film. The colors have been carefully thought through. Sometimes the scenes look as though they had been shot in California. You said that the landscapes could be in the U.S., but two seconds later, you're, it's quite obviously Fréjus. Things are very uh, inspired by painting and uh, what really led to the choice of the texture, the flamboyant aspect of things. Of course, I studied decorative arts in Paris and I explored the very components of images, what uh, accounts for the beauty of a given image. Uh, taking account of art history. So this approach was linked to my training. The film is a mixed bag. You have Renaissance uh, paintings, you have TikTok, you have uh, photos that you see in, in films. It was a big mixture of piles of different things. It's a film about beauty. I therefore wanted to ensure that the film would be beautiful in itself. It's very plastic. It's uh, very very artistic. This was particularly important because it's bound up with Lian's dream. And a dream, such a dream, is a very noble cause, a very noble quest. And I wanted to underscore the fact that this was a very legitimate quest by uh, showing that the images in the film uh, themselves would be very beautiful. 
Oui. Mais dans tous les sens du terme, Things are very iconic. You play around with a lot of religious symbols as well. You are quite a believer. In religious terms, and you have this reference to icons, the Madonna at the end when she's in the plane, she's like a Madonna painted by Bellini. We're back in the Renaissance. It's sublime. There's this quest for, for perfection. She says, if I'm perfect uh, from a physical stance, people will look at me. And if people look at me, it's because they admire me. And if they admire me, it means I'm powerful. So there's this quest, absolute quest for perfection. It's almost mythological in nature. One cannot but adore the images. It's as though she was rising up to heaven at the end. The image of the Madonna is very striking. It imparts a, a religious dimension to the film. It's a question of elevation, uh, rising up to a higher level. No one calls into question uh, the sculpture of a Greek goddess uh, or a, a beautiful woman in a Renaissance painting. They depict absolute beauty. We all have these images in mind. So if she's looking for perfection, if she's divine, if she defies nature by uh, putting filler in her lips uh, and improving her physical appearance, well, all this is, is designed to turn her into a kind of an icon. And an icon is the word people use every day now. The idea is to gain access to the status of an icon. There's an image which struck me an awful lot as well. It's the contours. You have the impression that she's almost tribal. She's very beautiful. It's hypnotizing. It's captivating. How did you achieve this? And why did you insist on this aspect of things? Well, contouring is very fascinating, body sculpting. Sometimes uh, I watch tutorials on uh, makeup, and I find this very fascinating. Makeup, uh, from time immemorial, people have used makeup uh, to impress people. Uh, or even to go to war, people would use uh, makeup uh, to create masks. Uh, uh, facial painting was uh, often used. And I've never done this myself. I'd really love to try. But uh, with makeup, you can totally change the appearance of your face. People don't talk uh, that much about contouring highlighting face or body contours. It's, it's like painting. And she does this in her own manner. She puts on her makeup uh, and a heavy layer of it. But there's extreme face contouring. There are all sorts of different ways of going about this art. And she has chosen a contouring which uh, is more warlike and very authentic. It's all very striking. And I was extremely pleased to film this scene. We'll have to wind up, but I'd like to ask one last question. Dear producer, are you proud? Your production company does a lot of animations. You did La Vie de Ma Mère not long ago. How does it come about that you really believe in a first film? You may not have thought that it would end up in Cannes necessarily, but how did you really believe in the film? Well, I, first of all, I saw Agathe's short film, and I was deeply struck by what I saw. It was so pictorial, and also the topic addressed was uh, very striking. It was fascinating. I loved the fact also that Agathe, since the very beginning, shows how deeply she Im impacted she's been by her studies in decorative art. 
She works uh, on details. She has always done so. She wonders a lot about beauty, what is commonplace or vulgar. So I thought this was a very interesting approach. And then Agathe is an outstanding person. She's deeply impressive. And she writes beautifully well. She took a long time to write the film to get to exactly the right place uh, in terms of Liane. And once she had found that right place, I was fascinated by how precise she was in her script. It's a question of conviction, too. Agathe thought through every single detail of the film, the décors, the makeup, the, the costumes. Everything was uh, thought through very carefully from a visual stance. She has a very original way of working, therefore, and it's fascinating for a producer to have so much material and very clear-cut intentions. I was deeply uh, convicted that she's uh, an outstanding director who stands apart from others. She has her own way of doing things, and that is uh, very noticeable. The timing was perfect as well. When she started writing, well, when I talked about the theme and uh, reality TV, I thought, oh, good heavens. Why that topic? But when we read this script, everything was there. Mindsets had changed, women had taken different positions, and society wanted better to understand all these phenomena. So everything came together just at the right time. Also, I think uh, with uh, Les Enfants Sans Roi, that opened up uh, new doors in the world of the cinema, and it coincided with the, the fact that I was just finishing the writing of the script. I'd been wanting to talk about this idea for a very long time, and people's mindsets had evolved and changed. One last question. Malou, yesterday you saw the film on a huge screen. Which uh, sequence are you most proud of? What uh, really flabbergasted you when you saw the film last night? Well, there's nothing that really springs to mind, but uh, I love every single moment in the film. I like all the sequences. I adore Lian. You have the scene of the snack with Dino. The uh, French fry battle. It's a real battle. We laughed so hard that day. I was in high heels. I kept uh, stumbling. <laughs> And then the scene in the shower near the end, where I finally wash after the time on the beach, when I get the uh, phone call, I don't know, the scene in the shower, I, I, I was moved by myself. Those are the scenes that I like best, perhaps. Thank you very much. We'll stop there. <laughs> this idea, I like myself, we're also uh, deeply moved. Uh, and congratulations once again.